Released in 2003, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb is an action-adventure game that welcomed everyone's favorite professor of archaeology back to the video game world. It was the first and only Indiana Jones game for the original Xbox and was also released for the PC and PS2. The game introduced fans to a brand new story that takes us back to 1935, bringing us on a worldly adventure that takes us for a ride across the continents. Emperor's Tomb starts off with Indiana Jones searching for treasure deep in the jungles of Ceylon, known today as Sri Lanka. After climbing, rolling, and whipping his way to the treasure, he returns to his teaching job in the United States where he grades papers for the rest of his life. Oh wait, no. He's almost immediately offered an opportunity to hunt down an ancient pearl that grants incredible power to whomever holds it. So off he goes to Prague to collect a piece of a mirror that he'll need to track down the pearl. The story takes place before the films, but it doesn't require any previous knowledge of the series. It's completely standalone, so if this is your first Indiana Jones experience, you'll be fine. Given that this game came out almost 20 years ago, it looks fantastic. The Xbox team has done an incredible job of making sure we can play it on modern consoles. If you're playing it on the Xbox One X or Series X, you'll get to see it rendered in close to 4K, and it looks great. You'll notice some blurry textures, but as a whole, this game has a great look to it. You'll visit lush jungles, underwater temples, Prague Castle, and so many other gorgeous locations. Reminds me of my last day. The game also supports widescreen, so it'll fill the entire screen on modern TVs, which wasn't common for games of that era. There's also an option for subtitles, which is another awesome feature that we didn't see a lot in the early 2000s. The music in this game is a treat. It takes inspiration from the films and also incorporates the classic Indiana Jones theme throughout the soundtrack. The sound effects are excellent too, from the thunderous crack of the whip to the satisfying thud of landing a punch. The voice acting isn't gonna blow your mind and there's no Harrison Ford, but Indy's voice actor does a solid job. So where's your smuggler friend? Wuhan's helped me several times. He'll be here. And he'll take us to Kai's fortress? The game starts you off with a short tutorial level. It's not too painful, and it really helps you learn how the inventory and controls work. The controls are fairly tight, and for the most part, Indy moves exactly where you want him to move. But I wish the ledge grabbing was a little more forgiving. The game is pretty linear. You're usually moving from point A to point B, sometimes grabbing a few key items in between. But it doesn't always hold your hand. There were times, even towards the beginning, where I was completely lost and had no idea what to do. Reminds me of my last date. Most of the levels have some kind of puzzle to figure out. You might have to search around for explosives to break through a wall, or find coins to unlock a gate. I like that the game wasn't just running through caves and shooting bad guys, but I would have liked a little bit more clarity as to what you need to do. Indy's whip can be used as a weapon or to grab an unsuspecting enemy and drag them towards you. But the whip's most important use is as a tool to help you navigate through the levels. You'll need to use the whip a lot to swing between platforms and they'll usually give you a little hint with an icon in the top right corner. The timing is pretty exact, so you'll want to get some practice in during the first few levels. The combat in this game is interesting. The focus is on hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it feels satisfying when you're doing a combo on somebody. It really feels like you're beating the shit out of these guys, but sometimes it's the other way around. They do take a lot of hits to go down for good, and there's not a lot of bullets for the guns in the game. You can also pick other weapons up off the ground, but given how many hits these guys can take, I'm not sure the developers knew what a machete is. One of my frustrations with this game is that there aren't any checkpoints in the levels, combined with the fact that some of the jumps are extremely tricky. The levels are relatively short, but there's nothing worse than spending 15 minutes making your way through a level, then missing some ridiculous jump, or getting overwhelmed by enemies towards the end of a stage. They really throw a lot of instant death at you, especially in the later levels, so there's some element of trial and error. Luckily, the load times are nearly non-existent, so you can get right back into the action. Some of the deaths are complete BS. Are you kidding me? I fell through that little gap between the train steps and the platform. This is actually one of my worst nightmares in real life, fully realized in video game form. Sometimes you can run right through the level, zipping past enemies without a care in the world. Other times you have to kill all the enemies so that a door unlocks that lets you move on. And it's not always clear when you need to do that. So if you find yourself stuck, try getting rid of all the enemies first. One little detail that I love is how Indy's hat can fall off in battle and you can go pick it back up. You recover your health by drinking water at fountains placed in each level. You can also fill up your canteen as a reserve to take a drink whenever you're low on health. I don't know, there's something inexplicably wholesome about this. Hold on guys, time out, gotta hydrate. Reminds me of my last date. 
There's also med kits throughout the level, usually in these breakable crates that fully restore your health, and they really come in handy. There were definitely times in this game when I missed the modern trend of having automatic healing. One level in particular put a fountain right at the end of the level. Despite being low on health, I had to run past it because I was getting bombarded by the enemies. Little did I know, the next level was a boss battle, and let me tell you, it was not a good time starting that level with very low health. There's a good number of swimming sections, which could have been a disaster. Swimming in games isn't always done right, but luckily Indy swims fast and is pretty easy to control. And oftentimes, you're not the only one in the water. I almost screamed the first time this happened. There's also some on-rails, first-person shooting segments that aren't great because the aiming controls are a little stiff, but it does give you something different to do, and I appreciate that. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb is an action-adventure classic, but it's not without its flaws. The platforming can be frustrating, and the lack of checkpoints makes this game feel as ancient as the artifacts that Indy is digging up. But if you have about 15 hours of patience for an old-school game with a great soundtrack and interesting puzzles, this one's a lot of fun.